So welcome everybody to the joint meeting of the Rules and Open Government Committee and Committee of the Whole. And Tony, can we have a roll call, please? Arenas? Here. Cohen? Here. Davis? Here. Morales? Jones? Present. Okay, so we're gonna start out by reviewing the agenda for May 3rd. And after we are done with public comments, will the maker of the motion please also include the ad sheet. So we're gonna start out on pages four and five. Six and seven. Eight and nine. Ten and eleven. Twelve and thirteen. and 14 and 15. And 16. And the ad sheet. So we're now going to go to public comments. Do we have any members of the public who would like to speak on the agenda for May 3rd? No hands up. All right. Gonna bring, come back to the committee and just so that the uh, committee members know, I already had a conversation with Lee about uh, load balancing on the agenda. So he promised me that it's going to be easy selling from now to the end of June. So just so you know, I'm looking out for you. Uh, Councilmember Cohen. You make me laugh. Um, okay. <laughs> just a quick question for on the agenda, the, the land use items are time certain after six automatically. Is this an evening session specifically on the land use? That's that's the normal procedure is to have it. Yeah. That's it. Yes. Yeah, uh, unless, um, unless otherwise noticed um, yeah. or differently, but these were noticed for night. For night. Okay. I'll move approval of the agenda. With the ad sheet? Of course, with the ad sheet. All right. Second. Moved and seconded, uh, Tony? Arenas? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Morales? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. Okay, next is the agenda for May 10th. And we will start out on pages four and five. Six and seven. Eight and nine. Ten and eleven. And twelve and thirteen. All right, so we're going to go to the public. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this item? No hands. Okay, bring it back to the committee. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Tony? Arenas? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Morales? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. Okay, on to the consent calendar. Uh, go to the public first. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on consent? There are no hands. Okay, bringing it back to the committee. Get, get, get a motion, please. Move to note and file the consent calendar. Or this move to approve the consent calendar. That's There you go. Second. <laughs> All right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Tony? Arenas? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Morales? Yes. 
Jones. Aye. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is addressing rising crime and expanding treatment for arrestees in San Jose. Uh, we're going to go to the public first. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this item? I have Colin user one with his hand up. Hi. How are you doing today? Which uh, one are we on here? We're on C1 addressing rising crime. Oh, yeah, the rising crime. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, what we need to do is have more officers between midnight and six, not more traffic cops between eight and four, Monday to Friday. Right? That's what's wrong. Okay. And to focus on real crime, not, oh, I don't know, flagpoles that are too high or sheds that are too close to the fence or, or you know, uh, somebody, you know, maybe meandering in a park when the sun goes down. You guys know. You you know what little crimes that they focus on. Jaywalking, that's another one they like to focus on, even though they're not supposed to. What you need is more police between midnight and six. That will make the crime go down. Not speed cameras. Remember speed, the speed cameras you guys lobbied for? More traffic cops? How about license plate readers? No, you need what they call boots on the ground trying to enforce laws that are real crimes. It's not about infractions, which traffic tickets are. I think you need to get that through your thick skulls. Traffic tickets don't reduce crime. It's a revenueing tool. And you know what else it is? It gives you brownie points to say that your guys are solving crime when you have the conviction of a ticket, which is 100% of the time, typically. So, so why don't you guys put your collective heads together and start thinking about real law enforcement ver versus going after revenue and giving people tickets going 10 miles over the speed limit? Because that's what it is. Odd and done. Good afternoon, Chair Jones, Vice Chair Perales, and members of the Rules Committee. My name is Auden Leung, and I'm here representing Santa Clara County Board Vice President Susan Ellenberg's office. Unfortunately, her schedule precluded her from being here personally with us today, but we wanted to inform the Rules Committee that Supervisor Ellenberg, in her capacity as Chair of the County's Public Safety and Justice Policy Committee, and Council Member Raul Perales, in his capacity as chair of San Jose's Public Safety, Finance, and Strategic Support Policy Committee, have been in discussions together to coordinate and plan a joint city and county meeting around this topic of how can we partner more closely in ensuring public safety for our residents. As you know, the city controls the primary response mechanism to public safety issues, which is the police department, and the county has access to treatment services such as behavioral health and substance use treatment programs that can help prevent public safety issues. We're grateful for the ongoing collaboration between these groups and we're looking forward to further discussions on how we can strengthen an appropriately aligned response framework for our residents together. Thank you. Claire Beekman. Hi, thanks. Um... Uh, you're going. You're, you're addressing uh, meth uh, amphetamine use in this item, uh, which we're doing a bit more than we used to a few years ago. Um, boy, uh, good luck. Um, we're tackling big subjects here, and uh, I think you're trying to offer a few ideas how to be uh, pro. I don't know what the word is, but just to be more. Uh, what can be counseling services and. Um, and, and there isn't a, a big, huge, super emphasis on technology, uh, which is kind of nice in some ways uh, for this item. I mean, because, I, I, you know, this is stuff that stems from, you know, the big uh, to do back in the past November that, you know, all of the Bay Area said it's time we get tough on crime now. And this is a bit more nuanced than just let's dump in a ton of new technology, let's bring in a ton of new law enforcement. 
you're offering a bit uh, a different system. So thank you for that at least. And that counseling is always important. And as with a public record item today about the gun issues, you know, we're trying to find solutions that address the community itself. And, and that's always the key is how, how can we address our community issues to, uh, you know, lessen the future of uh, meth use overall and, 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 uh, and the like. So good luck in these efforts. Uh, you know, it wasn't mentioned as always, these are difficult subject matter. What, how do we talk about the future of fentanyl? And, and what do we do about that situation? I think it, in the very least, we all need to understand that it's a really dangerous substance. And when it's produced, it should be sold in really tiny, small amounts. And we have to get that through to everyone. Be very cautious with these things. Thank you. Tyler Haskell. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. I'm Tyler Haskell from Santa Clara Family Health Plan here. Um, we wanted to just mention that we submitted a letter, uh, hopefully that reached you all through the, the public comment process. Um, we were included in the memo, appreciate being mentioned and are eager to help out and find, find solutions. Um, our letter is intended to kind of clarify our role within the Medi-Cal system and how we may be able to contribute and um, I won't recite the letter and its points, but just wanted to let you all know that I'm here to answer any questions about it or in, engage in dialogue if you, if you want to. Thanks. Back to the committee. Thank you. Um, Councilmember Perales. I'm sorry, um, before I go to Councilmember Perales, uh, I see the mayor is here. Uh, mayor, would you like to speak to your memo? Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I just maybe if I could just offer a, a quick overview. I, I think we all recognize we have a challenge of crime in, in our city, as every big city does. But particularly the, the issue of rising violent crime is of deep concern to me, and I know many in our, in our community as we see the data over the last couple of years. And I think we all know the sources of, of crime and the problem are very complex, and they're not susceptible to uh, uh, to bumper sticker solutions. Uh, and we've all been working on a lot of important ways to address crime in our communities, including Project Hope and jobs programs of various kinds that we've all invested in. Mayor's King mentioned task force uh, initiatives and, and all the great nonprofits and faith-based communities that we're working with through that effort. And, and obviously the, the council has been a strong uh, proponent of adding police officers. We've added more than 200 to our department in recent years. And just recently through the March message, we approved adding more and that's, that's a good thing. And we need, we need all those things. We need a multivariate approach. We need a lot more prevention. We need intervention and yes, we do need enforcement. The challenge is that we're seeing rising violent crime even as we're adding officers uh, and as we're adding resources to many of these programs like jobs programs uh, and expanding job project hope. And so, uh, I undertook an effort with partners to try to understand what exactly is going on what here locally. We know this is a national trend we're seeing in big cities, so we're certainly not alone in this. And, and obviously that means there are larger factors here, undoubtedly relating to mental health and a lot of issues relating to the pandemic. But locally, we are seeing two basic phenomena, which is one is uh, a significant uh, depopulation of the jail that is resulting in a, uh, an escalated level of people who are being released uh, and being released without having uh, drug treatment programs. They're inpatient that will actually provide sufficient uh, treatment, particularly for stimulants, methamphetamine. Uh, a, uh, a challenge with those individuals who are not uh, showing up for court. Uh, and then relating to that whole issue of what I call the revolving door at the jail is a lack of methamphetamine addiction treatment. Uh, so that's where this set of proposals is primarily targeted. I know this is complex and there are more, many facets and I hope we have an opportunity to have some dialogue about the individual elements because I know that um, there are some nuances. Uh, we've been obviously in this conversation with city staff now uh, and among many other partners for several months. And I think we've gotten to a place where Clearly, uh, our office, my, my team will take on a significant amount of work 
particularly around applying for uh, state funding for drug treatment uh, uh, facility and the, the infrastructure that we need for that. And particularly given our challenges around getting home key money uh, for unhoused, pro for projects that will house uh, our unhoused residents. Uh, this could be a really important supplemental source that we'll need uh, to, to really uh, get more inventory out there. In this case, uh, housing with drug treatment uh, provided in outpatient setting in, in the uh, complex. So, so we're willing, more than willing to take on that kind of work. We know that housing is, staff is, is really uh, overwhelmed with all the, all the work they've got already. Uh, we indicate we're happy to take it on with their support of providing some supportive data. The solutions that are advocated here um, are really following the four basic buckets. One is better advocating with judges to keep serious and violent offenders in jail. Um, and that consists of providing data uh, and information through bail affidavits and also providing data um, that can support advocacy of the DA and, and a police with the judges about um, who is being released and how they're doing out there. Uh, and then secondly, um, where arrestees are released pretrial and appropriately so, we wanna ensure they have drug treatment and the services they need. And that's really relates to uh, the effort I just mentioned around our efforts to apply for funding through the state. Um, I know that there were some concerns expressed by a St. Clair Family Health Plan. We've been in conversation with them. We certainly don't expect them to provide drug treatment services. We know that's not what they do. Um, so we're very well informed about that, uh, but uh, to the extent that they have members, um, uh, then those members who may be unhoused or may need uh, housing through this program uh, would then be eligible to enhance care management, which would then link them to substance abuse treatment and primary care and mental health services. Uh, the third bucket of, of sort of solutions is really around uh, where we know folks are failing to appear. We need to rearrest them, <laughs> uh, uh, particularly if they are individuals charged with serious or violent felonies. Um, and I, I am receipt of the letter from the public defender, uh, who I have great respect for, uh, Molly O'Neill. She's actually a public, public defender, but obviously I know public defender has a perspective and, and, and I fully expect. I think it's important to note um, the suggestion that somehow or another we cited, cited pretrial release statistics as misleading. Uh, the very statistics she cites is exactly what I put in the footnote, uh, which is easily explained. Uh, the data we're relying on is data the county is publishing publicly. Uh, and so if there are problems with the data, it's with the county, uh, that is their data. And what the data shows is uh, almost half of pretrial detainees who are released are either failing to appear or they're committing new crimes. And that's a problem, particularly if those individuals uh, do have some serious and violent offense. Um, and we are particularly concerned about their proclivity to reoffend, And so the, the council has already approved funding through the March message to help to supplement uh, some of that. We want to keep data about what we're doing, what we're spending, so that uh, everyone is very clear about what the cost is and where the cost should be borne around some of these decisions. And then finally, the last element really relates to reducing thefts and burglaries in our small businesses. Uh, that's the issue relating to the data portal and uh, ensuring we have affidavits. Uh, I, I'll note with regard to affidavits, I know our police department had concerns about using non-sworn staffing. That's perfectly fine. We don't have to use non-sworn staffing. Uh, Felt affidavits, we can certainly have uh, police officers do that. Uh, in either case, the funding is the same one way or another. We need to pay folks uh, often on overtime to do the work. And so however they deem the work is best done, it's done. But one way or another, we're going to need affidavits to be filled out for either high bail requests um, or detention requests, or uh, for warrants, if in fact it, it, it's a situation where a person needs to be arrested. So these are really a, a set of um, incomplete solutions. And they're incomplete because we are a very small part of the criminal justice system. Uh, the city has control essentially over some prevention programs that we all advocate for and support, uh, and the police. And that's really important. We're gonna keep doing everything we can do on our end, uh, but we also have to get engaged in these other parts of the system uh, because uh, as a whole, the system is not succeeding right now. 
Uh, we have to be honest about those failures and the failures are laid out very clearly. If you look at pages um, five and six in the memorandum with just some of the more egregious examples of very serious uh, charges, uh, people are being released after homicide and child molestation charges, uh, in some cases without bail, uh, where we're seeing people who are being released who clearly have a history of violent crime and then reoffending in, in horrible ways. Um, we know we can do better. We've got to work together to do it. And I'm hoping that this can be a first step. We want to have more formal conversations, certainly, uh, but we hope that at least we can get rolling by having city staff uh, engaged with us at the table. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. I'm going to uh, let Lee, because I know they had um, the early consideration form that they prepared. Uh, Lee, go ahead and speak to that. Sorry, this is on mute. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Lee Wilcox, Assistant City Manager. Staff did prepare an early consideration form, um, as noted on it. Uh, several items are green. Uh, several items are green pending uh, adoption of the 22-23 uh, proposed budget um, for those items that, count for, uh, that Mayor Licardo referenced. Um, and then there's two yellow light items. And so that is in your rules packet for your consideration. Great. Thank you. Now, um, Councilmember Prowlis, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Vice Mayor, and appreciate uh, Lee the, the the staff response on this. I know that we wanted to buy some more time because there was a lot of meat in this memo uh, initially, and uh, as was was stated in the memo, uh, the majority of it is is really work that is happening outside of the, the city's jurisdiction. And so um, in an attempt to try and I think address some of these issues um, and finding where we as a city can augment them, um, you know, drilling down what's possible, um, what's not, what's advocating, what's funding here. I think you, you've done a good job in regards to the, the, the uh, early consideration memo there. Um, I will say though, I am concerned with a number of what is presented as a, a greenlit item, um, because I, I don't know if we've had the, the necessary conversations to be able to, to determine if that's the direction that we would like to go. I know it's the direction in the, the memo from uh, the mayor and two of our colleagues, um, but I still think there's a lot of meat here to be able to discuss before we simply issue a, a greenlit direction and say, yeah, this is the path that we wanna go down. I recognize some of this, is going to require some uh, budget uh, approval, and I think you know those items can can come up in the budget, and we can discuss some of those if if um, you know if if the council is interested. Uh, but there's others that are more advocacy based, and and some work that we'd like to maybe see our police department do. I think even the the, the data gathering clearly not a maybe a contentious issue, but it it could be as we've seen today uh, in the letters that we've gotten back, as the mayor pointed out from the public defender uh, and other response that we've heard from the individuals and the organizations that are actually um, in charge, right, of, of a lot of, of what is being asked to uh, or what is being critiqued here. And so uh, I do think that, that even that in and of itself, even some of the, the data would warrant a more detailed conversation. Um, and I took the time as well after last week's rules meeting to dive a little deeper into this and then and then have subsequently read the responses from uh, others in our our community as this has spurred up quite the reaction um and that's why i actually connected with supervisor ellenberg she reached out to me as well and, and I, I would say there was uh, a pretty clear consensus across the board from similar to the public defender's letter on hey this involves a lot of other entities and jurisdictions and um, it would be nice to, to work together versus the city, have a siloed conversation here on uh, critiques and then potential recommendations that maybe we, we discuss some of these things because we, we may not know all the info. And so my conversation with Supervisor Ellenberg, since she chairs their public safety committee and I chair ours, was like we have done in many occasions, uh, and uh, Councilmember Arenas is, is, is really led the way on that, that we could collaborate on a joint hearing to actually have some of these conversations 
uh, with the relevant stakeholders being a part of it uh, versus kind of, I think, the path that we're, we're going down here. And so she agreed and she said she would be more than willing to do so. My recommendation today would be that we actually take uh, the entirety of this memo here and besides maybe the items that if, if the mayor wanted to bring them up subsequently through the budget process or if council member Mahan or Carrasco wanted to do so in a, in a budget document, I think that can have its own path. Uh, but otherwise, the entirety of the memo, I would like to see um, that we refer it to PISFIS, our Public Safety Finance and Strategic Support Committee, which I chair, and that, as you've heard today from Supervisor Elmer's office, we are already in agreement and, and we will work to collaborate a, uh, a joint hearing, and uh, that'll be my recommendation. So we have a motion. Um, I'll second if that was a motion. Second. Yeah. I think it was a motion, wasn't it, Council that, that was, that was, yeah. Okay. And I'm, and I'm through, thank you. All right, uh, Council Member Cohen. Yeah, thanks. I, I don't know that I need to add a lot more to Council Member Perales's comments. I mean, there's a lot to unpack in this memo and a lot of which is um, kind of responsive to various uh, jurisdictions, whether it be the district attorney or the county um, or um, the sheriff's office. There's a lot of different, uh, and, and, and the ju judicial system, right? There's a lot of different um, pieces here that it's not clear to me um, that we, are, we have enough information to be able to say whether these specific recommendations are the right ones or whether um, you know, this, is the, that this is the appropriate path to take at this time before we have that joint hearing. Uh, you know, I've had conversations regularly for, over the past year with members of the Board of Supervisors about how we address our mental health issues on the streets, how we deal with uh, drug addiction, what we do for people who need extra service. Um, I was really pleased that you know, after some of those conversations, the county moved forward yesterday on one part of the solution, adding, I forget the number of beds, but enough to treat 700 people through their drug treatment program this year, which will add a lot of capacity. And so, I, I mean, I think that that collaborative approach of having, of reaching out and finding out how we can work together and how we can um, support the things that they're doing as a county um, is, is the productive way to, to approach these kinds of um, uh, challenges that we have to face collectively. So um, I do support the idea of having that joint hearing, talking about these various elements, finding out what, what people all agree should the city should be focused on and what people agree the county should be focused on. I don't prefer uh, the approach of kind of sending a message to the county of telling them what we want them to do as opposed to trying to do it collaboratively. So I'll be supporting the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Davis. Thank you. I, uh, first of all, I want to thank the mayor for his uh, work and leadership on this important issue. I certainly, obviously, am supportive of improving our, our primary responsibility, which is public safety. So thank you, Mayor, for that. I did have one, one question for you, and I see you have your hand up, Mayor, so you can answer it um, after my remarks if you want. But I guess I didn't really understand the purpose of the city getting into the business of doing drug treatment um, when the county yeah. has that responsibility for all social services and funding from the state. So I'm not, I don't know if we have standing in that, in that area. And I don't know that that's a, um, a business that we want to get into for lack of a better term. So I'd, I'd like to hear more about that. I am very supportive of the motion that's on the floor because there are so many stakeholders and players and the county agencies and systems um, that we we have to hand off to after uh, PD makes an arrest, I think we do have to collaborate better and coordinate more. Um, so I think getting that getting that started at the committee level makes sense. I would also obviously I think the mayor and the president of the board of supervisors should be involved in discussions as well. Um, as as well as the DA and and others that the mayor would deem appropriate from the agencies that are listed in the memo, um, I have been increasingly well. I've always opposed the the no bail, and I've been increasingly concerned about the reoffenses before trials are happening because they're so long. Um, the waits for trials are so long. So I know we have identified issues to deal with, and I I really do respect the time and effort that was put into this and. And as always, the request for data um, 
and the public costs of rearrest. I, I did want to ask uh, Lieutenant Donahue about that. I noticed in here it's a, it basically said we don't have uh, all the resources to do that. Is that something that you would need an outside consultant or a university to do a study on a, a comprehensive look of that? So, yeah, I think we talked a little bit about that in the um, early consideration form and the extensive nature that it would take to gather the data and then analyze it to determine what those actual costs are, right? Because we can put dollar amounts to time, to equipment, to personnel, as well as, you know, um, dispatchers and call takers and everything that is involved, but it's extensive information that needs to be analyzed. And to do that, we just don't have the staff. A university could absolutely come in and do this, um, but it would it would take some time to do. Right, and I, and I know from, um, from our work with the Stanford grad students that that also takes some of your time as well. So it's not, um... <laughs> Getting people familiar with with the data that that you all keep is um, is well why you're in your job right <laughs> it's it's time can it can be time consuming so do you have a sense of what it would take to um, I I assume we'd have to do an RFP or work with the university do we have a sense of what it would take to even get that study going or what that study might cost. Um, are you asking about process wise or time wise? What, Both. What how at? how long it would take to get an RFP for this request, and then also what what it might what you might ask for in a in a budget addendum or for for funds for that. I think I'm going to punt that to uh, Lee. Yeah, well, I'm happy to take that, and it's it's not because I'm afraid Steve was going to throw out a big number. Um, <laughs> I think if you're if you're referring to uh, recommendation number five, five, yes, um, and then yeah, bullet number three. Um, you know, we went back and forth on this, so I think to go back into the past and get a bunch of this data is where we would need assistance. Um, however many, if we were looking at two or three years. Um, Versus if it's something that it would obviously be much less work if it was something that um, we needed to look at moving forward, like from now on. Um, but again, I think the, you know, the assistant chief and Lieutenant Donahue and I have discussed, let's have these initial meetings in this collaboration that the mayor's convening to see if this is even a really big need. Um, and if it, if it isn't a need, then you know, maybe we just focus on data moving forward, but if, if we do think, you know, this helps our advocacy or, you know, quite frankly, if we're seeing opposition to certain things where we might need advocacy, then then we would loop back around to this. So that's how we would approach it, Council Member. Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, I'll be supporting the, the motion on the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you. I saw Council Member Reyes's hand up. I didn't want to jump in front of her. All right. Uh, That's okay, Mayor. Uh, I think if it's a response to Councilmember Davis, it's okay. absolutely appropriate. Okay, right. great. Yeah. Um, yeah, a few thoughts. Uh, first, uh, you know, the first line of the, of the memo is to direct the city manager to participate in meetings with these agencies. And whether I'm there or not is less important than having staff there, namely police department and city manager staff. Uh, and, and the reason why I say it's important for staff to staff meetings is because we're not going to have judges come to a joint county city meeting. Um, they're not going to come and um, they don't want to publicly talk about these kinds of things. It's not appropriate for a judge. Um, similarly, the DA and the public defender um, don't report to the county executive. And so that's why the direction of the staff was really, look, these are really important players. Um, and certainly, I hope it's evident from the memo, recognizes that the decisions are overwhelmingly being made outside City Hall. Uh, and so, yes, we do have to work collaboratively with folks. I don't think we actually get to any kind of result by having a county city meeting with a group of us and a group of county supervisors talking about the problem because um, we're not the ones actually making decising for any of those agencies. We're not judges, we're not DAs, we're not public defenders. 
Um, although obviously the county executive does play a role um, pretrial services. Um, so they're certainly, their staff is absolutely relevant. Um, so, so that's why it would suggest it be staff. And again, I don't need to be at those meetings, but I think staff needs to be at those meetings so we can at least talk about where the challenges are, because this is a problem I've heard that's not recent. Uh, I heard those com these complaints from Chief Eddie Garcia uh, two years ago saying, all we're doing is arresting people that are right back out on the street in two hours. And the data is really clear. You know, the data that was already collected by police department about a year ago, you know, that we have 30 people that we're arresting 10 times or more uh, in a period of a year, uh, that says an awful lot. And our police department, I know is frustrated by it. I know, cause I talked to officers about their frustrations. And the problem is we're not having those conversations and I'm not confident those conversations will result in something productive if they're in public hearings around elected officials. On the other hand, I think they could be very productive um, if it's DAs and public defenders and pretrial services and county executives and the police um, in our city management talking about how, uh, what the problem is and, and where the data shows. I really agree with the sentiment of uh, Councilman Davis. We don't wanna be in the drug treatment business. That's not our business. Um, we have um, a really severe uh, shortage in drug treatment beds. Um, we're not going to get in the business of inpatient treatment. We know we can't, uh, nor do we have any intention of doing that. Um, on the other hand, um, what the state, and I'm saying this from Secretary Mark Galley um, at HHS, has been very clear is that cities can apply for these funds uh, that are described here, the BHCIP funds, obviously in partnership with the county, and we've talked extensively with the county about this. I know uh, our city staff have been involved in this and they are supportive of our application. Uh, and this is a way for us to get more units built using capital infrastructure dollars. Um, and the idea wouldn't be the inpatient like lock facility, it would be outpatient treatment that'd be provided at the facility because Lord knows we'd all love to have drug treatment at any of our current um, quick build housing apartment communities or converted motels for, for our house, right? Um, and if we had the resources, we'd do it. Um, this provides us a means to use some state resources for the construction, whether that's renovating a motel or building a quick build apartment community. And then obviously relying on a provider, the county obviously needs to be centrally involved in all that. They indicated their assent to having a supply. We've been talking about they're applying for some parts of this grant, we're applying for other parts and that would be the idea. And then finally, I just know that um, there are items here that don't have anything to do with other agencies and those are generally under paragraphs four and five, particularly four uh, relating what we can do about enabling the uploading of video evidence, for example, taking positions on some straightforward bills uh, in front of Congress and the state legislature to ensure we can halt online fencing. Um, those are the kinds of things we can do all by ourselves. I, I, last thing I didn't mention, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor. Um, we have already approved, that is you, the council, we've already approved funding in the budget for the re-arresting and for affidavits. Um, so assuming that also gets approved in June, um, that would be in the budget. At least that's what you've directed to come back to us in the budget. I appreciate Councilor Perales' point, which is, hey, some of these may be policy questions we want to have broader conversations about with the council and with the county, that's certainly fine. I suspect what we're going to hear from the county staff every time we've gone to them in the last six months or a year, I don't know, Lee, you tell me, how many times have we asked for a joint meeting for one issue or another? And for the most part, um, they're feeling pretty overwhelmed and they're not super interested in joint meetings. Lee, uh, correct me if I'm wrong about that. No, that is correct. We've requested five times, I believe, at this point for a joint council and board meeting. Yeah, so I, I certainly appreciate the sentiment. Happy to have these conversations publicly, collaboratively, um, but I don't think a joint meeting is likely to get scheduled. So that's why the thought was, let's have staff talking to staff and see if we can at least get through some of these challenges. Um, and hopefully we'll have less frustrated residents and officers. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Council Member Arenas. Thank you, Vice uh, Mayor. Um, this is a difficult uh, 
because I know that everything that's in your memo mayor are areas of concern for all of us. And you know they they seep into our communities over generations, and that's a lot of what we see um, in terms of of symptoms right now. Um, just the difficulty of of being uh, able to maybe re-enter a society after being incarcerated and not having the support system, maybe not having sober living environments spread out throughout the city, not just solely in the downtown area so that there isn't any of those uh, repeated drug social cues that relapse folks. Um, and so it, it, I, I was in, I was assigned to drug court for a number of years and it was a meth, it was a specialty court uh, meant for parents with children under the age of three, three and under. And um, the great, the, 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 I think the most effective of the strategies was a lot of the wraparound services um, that were provided. Um, not only, you know, not only uh, of course housing and uh, inpatient and outpatient treatment um, but parenting um, support, which is where I, I came in um, to play a part, um, because a lot of folks just don't know how to be that parent to that child, and then that becomes a whole cycle um, for, the, for that next generation. Um, and so I, I, I like the idea of working on some of these um, issue areas. Um, I, I do, I do think that we need to have a very comprehensive conversation with the different systems that are impacted here. I know that we can have um, some pilot programs potentially if we have these conversations. If we get the right folks into the room, that we could have them through uh, drug court. There's a lot of specialty uh, courts that offer wraparound services currently. And they've already figured out the the, the best uh, theory of change. They've already figured out what's the best strategy, what what's the best wraparound model um, for for the different folks who are coming through. I think we just don't. I wouldn't know. You know, I, I know that that um, incarceration is definitely not the only solution. It is there. There is a lot of systemic issues that. Um, that unfortunately um, create, uh, allow people to be back in the streets um, that really shouldn't be. And I completely agree. I know, you know, we, we have had some folks who've attacked um, volunteers over at Grace Church and that person had previous um, intimate partner violence. And we, knowing some of that, um, they were still released. And so, um, I do think that the that judges aren't hard enough on on certain um, crimes like uh, sexual abuse, sexual assault, intimate partner violence. I would like to see um, a different kind of um, incarceration and, and impact um, on those folks, or a different wraparound service for those folks. So I'm absolutely interested in this in this. Um, in this memo and, and how to how to accomplish this. I do think that there is an opportunity for us to have this collaboration. I, I had, um, I think from November, November to maybe two weeks, three weeks ago, I've had two joint meetings with the Children and Families um, Committee. Um, you know, there's, there's obviously uh, some work that has to be done by our teams, but um, but it can be done. Um, and I think that there's a lot of opportunity for us to do some of, maybe some of that legwork uh, through the committees. And it doesn't leave anybody out of the conversation because what we've done in the past is we've set up the committee as a committee uh, of the whole. So everyone and anyone can come in and contribute to that conversation in terms of council members, as well as public, of course, always, our public is always allowed to come in. Um, but I meant for, for council members. And so I, I think that, that we should, um, at the very least, give a shot um, in terms of our collaboration and trying to see how, 
how we can bring these systems together so that we can have one conversation. I'd, I'd hate for us to have to, to advance in any of these different areas that are green lit, and which it seems like the majority of them, um, all, all to know, you know, all to realize that we can't really, you know, we're advancing yet everybody else is maybe um, functioning in a different, with a different framework, with a different mindset. Uh, making decisions just very differently than what we are and I think that's where um, the collaboration makes sense so that uh, we're all on the same page we're all taking the same kind of approach um, to the issues and I think there's a lot of learning that we that I I'm not going to say we that I need to um, that that I need to have so that I can make sure that that what I contribute is is meaningful and I don't know that at this point I would be able to to do that I am part of the committee that um, Council Member Perales um, chairs um, for public safety but I I you know I would want us to have study sessions in some of these areas maybe our own um, uh, our own homework uh, to learn more so that we can also have meaningful uh, engagement with the rest of the systems. Um, I do think this is an opportunity for us to um, create uh, uh, some slight uh, differences in how uh, folks are treated and, um, and potentially create some recidivism um, rates that that uh, would benefit our community members and I know the county is is building an inpatient um, mental health uh, uh, facility behind Valley Med and for the very first time they're going to include youth and I think to me that that's also going to make a huge difference because that youth that normally would just get incarcerated would now have the possibility of being in an inpatient facility where they can get that um, support that they actually need. And I know that they're going to have um, just a, a plethora of, of wraparound services like we haven't seen before. The same thing is true for the new jail they'll have the, that level of capacity in terms of counselors and support services and the new jail as well. Um, anyways, all, all, all to, th this is just my perspective on, on this issue, which I agree that uh, meth is definitely in, uh, a drug that has impacted people of color for a really long time and we've never really shut it down. And now on top of that is opiates and, you know, all of the, the, these new drugs that I just, I can't keep up with, but um, that certainly are killing our children and are killing our youth. So. Um, I'm on board. I, I do think that the pa the best path forward, at least the first step, is to try to see if we can do it on committee. Um, and then um, if that doesn't seem to work out, then we can try something else and we can pivot. All right. Thank you. Um, Council Member Davis. Thank you. I just, I, I thought about what the mayor was saying and I, um, about directing the city manager to participate in meetings, but I also listening to council member Arenas and thinking about the um, supervisor Ellenberg had a press conference yesterday about additional detox beds and a new um, a new program, a pilot program for the treatment of meth addiction. And then they are also implementing streamlined processes to directly contact connect um, homeless patients to detox and residential treatment programs. And so it, in some ways, I think going through the committee process, having joint, a joint committee meeting will help us learn more about what is already being done and what is planned so that we can figure out where to plug in. And then on, so that's on one hand. And then on the other hand, Mayor, I guess I was thinking about, I don't know how the Mayor's Gang Prevention Task Force was originally set up if it was something like this where the council had to take action to direct city staff to work with the other agencies but you and you can correct me if I'm wrong but I think everyone you're thinking about comes to those Mayor's Gang Prevention Task Force meetings already am I right about that yeah I think the challenge is that as you know we're really the focus is on youth um, and young adults in those programs and appropriately so. Um, what we're talking about 
are uh, quite often very serious offenders who are well along in years. Right. Totally understand. I guess my point is you but you are not the same players. No. I mean, for example, mm -hmm. criminal uh, judges probably a different group of folks, for example. Okay, so when the Mayor's Gang Prevention Task Force was was first devised, I know that predates you, um, but did the did the mayor have to go to the city council to set that up? Because it sounds like that's what you're setting up another type of task force. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm having these meetings. I've been having these meetings for the last yeah. six months. So you're right. I mean, I can just keep having these meetings. I'll do it. Um, would be helpful, particularly as we think about, for example, applying for state funding for a facility um, would be helpful to have be able to say there's some authorization. Uh, it's not just coming from the mayor's office. Okay. Um, yeah, and obviously I understand not everyone's going to agree with all the solutions. That's fine. I think right. more than anything, I think we really want the opportunity to be able to say, look, as a city, we're concerned. Um, here's the data we have. We'd like to see the data you have to help us understand what's the best solution. But okay. it's hard to look at the data and not conclude that there's a lot of people being released back onto our streets uh, that we'd all probably prefer would either be in drug treatment um, or in jail. Certainly, certainly. So I guess what I'm trying to figure out is I, I do think a good chunk of this work could happen in a joint committee, but I understand you're wanting the council to kind of give you a seal of approval that you can kind of go and take and say, we're all we're all behind this. So I'm I'm wondering if we can maybe amend the motion to take the the piece, Councilmember Perales, take the piece about directing the city manager to participate in meetings with the mayor's office, all that first part to basically form form a task force that the mayor and the city manager can can co-direct. And, and refer that to city council for approval, since it sounds like that's what the mayor is asking for. Um, I'm, I'm hesitant in that uh, for a couple reasons. Obviously, uh, uh, you know, I think as the mayor points out, he's already been having these, no, nothing stops him from convening people to, to converse. Um, but I also recognize the challenge of trying to coordinate an official task force and that is not a it, it sounds right maybe like a uh, an easier lift but it's not and i specifically for instance on homelessness i have attempted for over five years now as lee can attest on trying to convene a task force um and had to go through priority setting had to go through the budget actually got some funding through the budget turned into just an internal uh you know working group with city staff and and ultimately, not as uh, I think as straightforward as it may uh, seem, or as we may like it to be, to convene different stakeholders. Uh, I would prefer that at the moment the mayor continue having the meetings as he has, and then um, after we have an initial conversation to determine would we want to refer something to create a brand new task force. Uh, I think you know outside of the conversation we're just having right now, I haven't even considered that because I. You know, I, I, I took the mayor's memo in those meetings is not necessarily a task force, but as conversations that I likely assumed he, as he mentioned, he has already been having. So I would prefer to hold off on, on any recommendation like that at the moment. Okay, I, I understand you're the, you're the maker of the motion and there seems to be some, there seems to be enough um, support for it. I certainly do support some of this work happening in the committee um at the committee level i do i do think we want to promote coordination across agencies and i and i'm hadn't thought about the fact about judges not being part of the the county they're part of the county system but not um not under jeff so uh i i do i i guess i can make a substitute motion that would <laughs> That would include everything that was in Council Member Perales's motion, in addition to a referral to the City Council for um, specific direction to the City Manager to participate in co-lead meetings with the Mayor's Office on these topics. 
Okay, we have a motion, substitute motion on the floor. And I don't hear a second, so the motion dies. Councilmember Davis, anything else? That's it. I had to try. All right. Uh, Councilmember Bronx. Yeah, thank you. Just a couple of responses. And first off, I, I'm again, I'm not totally against the idea that maybe we 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 end up with some sort of uh, task force like that. I just I'm not prepared to to give that direction today. I would like to have the conversations first. And it is my understanding that actually um, the presiding judge, as I'm hearing from Supervisor uh, Ellenberg's office, uh, does actually report to their Public Safety and Justice Committee. Um, uh, and 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 so it's actually I think potential that um, we are getting the right group of people or the right committee from the county and we may not know that yet that um, you know how how well that conversation can go and then my hope is and I recognize that would not be the the end all be all is that we just have you know one joint hearing the idea would be let's actually get some of the right stakeholders in the room and then collectively come up with a direction move forward and so it may very well be likely that we come out and say you know what we want to have a more continued uh, task force or, or working group discussion out of that, and and I'd like to have that uh, discussion jointly with um, with our colleagues through the county. And I, and I do feel this is the you know the 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 best group, the best committee at the county uh, that we can be working with. And and just to speak to the mayor's comments, and I know Lee responded on the challenges because I personally am interested in other joint hearings, as Lee knows, um, with the county. Um, that I know we've we've had a challenge on getting uh, buy-in on, uh, but I specifically asked Su uh, Supervisor Ellenberg's uh, office to um, be able to be here today so they could express that that willingness was there. And as uh, Councilmember Arenas uh, expressed, she's had a lot of success in these joint hearings. So I, I think we have the commitment from their chair that is gonna drive that agenda uh, as, as I will drive the agenda with our public safety committee. And so we have the commitment that that meeting um, will happen. So I'm not concerned as the mayor is that, um, you know, that that meeting is somehow not going to be planned. I, I give you my commitment here and, and we will be working already again. We already are uh, in conversation. That's why I wanted them to, to be here today. Um, in regards to some of the items that, as the mayor points out, actually are under, um, you know, our, our ability to move forward with, for instance, um, the air tags right on, on decoy uh, um, for theft detection. As was stated in the early consideration form, those are actually, as we see, something that maybe is, is not actually as, um, as effective as we would like. And so I don't necessarily want to just assume, well, let's go based off of uh, the mayor's memo and then the early consideration form, and that's good enough for us to, to say some of these things we should move forward on. Um, and we heard the response on deploying you know, CSOs or non-sworn staff and how maybe that's not going to be um, the most effective. So again, uh, potentially, good ideas. All we have is a one week investigation and response from our city manager's office on this. Before we give any direction to move forward, I want a lot more conversation than that. Um, and simply just to, to, to take the word or the, the written um, word here of, of what's in the memo and then what's in the early consideration form and say, let's give direction to move forward. I would prefer to have, as I've given in the motion, a, a more detailed conversation on uh, all of these items. Uh, the mayor points out, and as I mentioned as well, the budget process has its own separate uh, path and, and we have an opportunity to approve some of those items that are, that are already being suggested in the budget uh, in May and likely they will pass uh, as they've gotten support from the, the council already. Um, but as a whole, I think that the remainder of this uh, recommendations in this memo should go as uh, the, the current motion stands and be referred to our public safety finance and strategic support committee. And uh, on, that's it for me, thanks. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, I know, Mayor, you have your hand up again, but just I want to just ask you a couple of quick questions. Well, sure. First of all, I want to thank you for bringing this issue forward. Um, all of us on the Council and you, I know, have heard from our residents in the increase in crime and what's going on in our city is, is a major concern. People just don't feel safe. And there's some debate on in terms of the root cause or what's, you know, what's driving this and you know, reasonable people can debate, but the, the bottom line is that our number one priority is public safety and keeping our residents safe. And right now they do not feel safe and we need to address that. Uh, I wanted to um, just ask you specifically in terms of your concerns about this joint meeting. 
Um, is it the fact that you don't think we'll be able to get the meeting pulled together or it's going to take too long? And if, yeah. and, what, and I just want to get an idea of like what type of timeline would be acceptable in terms of pulling something like this together? Yeah, my concern is these are very technical issues um, about pretrial release. Um, that a DA and a public defender and judges are going to be engaged in, and they're not conversations that happen in public hearings very easily. Um, among a group of folks, all of us would need an enormous amount of experience and education in that process to be able to have any kind of meaningful input and insight into. And so I just think these are conversations None of those people I just mentioned, by the way, public defenders, DAs, or judges, report to the county executive, right? The county executive does, however, have control over, for example, pre-health services. That's really important, at least as I, at least as I understand it, and drug treatment. So all these folks are important, but they don't all just flow up through the county. And judges are employed by the state. So it's just really important, and, and, and frankly, I, I'm not going to speak for any particular judge, but I'm fairly confident judges would say they're not that interested in a big public arena. That's not that's not the way judges work. Um, they um, they don't believe, and appropriately so, that their decisions should be subject to the political winds. Um, and getting into public hearings and, and all that is is not something that I think they're going to find to be that constructive. Yeah, so, and, and, and I totally, and I don't disagree with you. Uh, yeah. Kind of where I was going with this, Sam, or, or me, I'm sorry, Mayor, is no, that's fine. Um, my concern that if we, if we reach out to stakeholders like judges, the DA and public defenders, and we're, we're speaking from San Jose's voice, the county is also going to be talking to, to those individuals. Of course. And they're going to be speaking from their voice and their perspective. As we, as we expect, we, they should be in the conversation. Exactly, which undermines what we're trying to accomplish. So the reason why I'm supportive of having this joint meeting is at least provide an opportunity where we can convene with the count, our county uh, counterparts and at least attempt to work out some of these issues so that we can speak with you know one voice and one vision. We might not be successful, but I, I think it's it's incumbent up, upon us to at least try to do that. Now, that being said, you know, I don't want to have a situation where, you know, we have to wait six months or eight months to even, you know, pull something like that together. But if we can uh, get something that, if we can get that meeting scheduled in a, a pretty uh, timely fashion, I think it would, uh, it would be worthwhile to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish in terms of having that dialogue with the other stakeholders. Yeah, my, my concern is we'll be talking to, to people who aren't necessarily the ones um, who have the ability to control the levers. Okay. And so it'll be a political discussion in a political environment, um, but ultimately won't change practice. Um, I, I just want to add one other concern among several, which is we've got a deadline to apply by May 31st under the BHCIP program. I've had ex conversations with the county executive on a couple of occasions about this. Uh, and uh, Lee has, as, as well as city staff with other folks in the county staff, gone through very extensive conversations about how to apply when and so forth. If we miss the deadline, we miss the deadline. So we can go to joint meetings and so forth, but that means we lose that opportunity for our share of a $2.2 billion program that to date, to my knowledge, hasn't resulted in anything getting built in our city or in our county. Um, now I know the county may be applying for other uh, elements in that program, but so far, in, at least in the first phase, nothing. And so, you know, there is a very big missed opportunity here if we are not, what would seem to be a, a pretty un, uh, uncontroversial proposal, which would be to get state resources to build or convert housing that we can then use for outpatient treatment. Um, I would hope at least 
that element could go forward so we can make an application and get state funding to expand drug treatment in a city where I know we don't have any responsibility for drug treatment, but I can tell you from talking to any drug treatment providers, um, we have a woeful inadequacy of basic treatment resources. Duly noted, Mary, I, I never want to miss a, a, a grant deadline. So duly noted. Um, Council Member Cohen. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for that um, good line of questioning. Um, because that, that's kind of what I was, was going to address. You know, I, I have had conversations over the last couple of months with members of the Board of Supervisors directly on some of the things in this memo or other things that I've been interested in. And every time I talk to them, I learn something that I didn't know or didn't understand um, because these aren't things that are in our areas of expertise. And while it may be true that there are certain um, areas that they don't have direct control over, they do, for example, oversee the jail, even though they don't necessarily you know, um, control the district attorney's office or the, or the judicial system. There's a lot of things they understand about a lot of these issues. And I've heard from some people saying, well, you know, you, you're, the city might think this is a good idea, but we have reasons why we don't think it's a good idea. Um, or there's some, some elements of this that we could probably work on together, but we probably need to have a conversation about what, about what our, our joint interests are or, or how to come up with a, a unified plan on those things. And I just don't, I think that taking the tack of, you know, we're going to advocate for these directly with, um, with certain with other uh, organizations in the county, and kind of bypass the county um, itself, or um, assume that we have to do this at a staff to staff level, but not get the input of the county board. I think. I mean, I do think the county board has a has a level of expertise in some of these issues that we would benefit from. So it, Councilman Cohen, I've explicitly mentioned Santa Clara County throughout this memo. Yeah, no, I, I know. I, bypassing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but, but to me, I mean, the question about whether it was staff to staff or board to board, I think you asked, the, you had said the question about policymakers versus staff. And it strikes me that, you know, there's been some resistance about staff to staff meetings, but we do have a commitment to have meetings with the policymakers and the policy, the board members that I speak to have provided me with a lot of good insight and expertise in some of these issues that I don't think that we always have. And so I, I do think there's value to be had in that conversation with members of the board um, and that joint meeting that Councilman Prowlis recommended, I think makes a lot of sense as a first step for the reasons that Vice Mayor Jones mentioned, which is that gives us the opportunity to say, which are these things that we can do together and which are the things that, that we, we are gonna disagree on and maybe won't We'll be advocating from different places, and that's good to know as well, because you know we're not necessarily going to get the change we want if we're going it alone. So I, that, that's the reason why I think this is an important intermediate step, because it's not clear to me, you know, while we might say this sounds like a good solution, when I've run some of these things by others, they 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 give different um, viewpoints about why some of these things aren't necessarily as straightforward as they might seem. Um, so that, that's the reason why I think it's really important for us to have that, that intermediate step. Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot in this, in this, these specific solutions. And then, I mean, there's even questions like why, for example, is the county not applying for this grant funding when it is their responsibility to be running a program like this and to operate it? I mean, for us to say, well, we want to get this done so we can apply for this grant when we wouldn't be able to actually operate the service that the grant would be funding um, you know, isn't necessarily to me the, the approach we should be taking because we want the county to be on board so we can we can apply for this jointly. We can have that conversation in a short time. That's great. Then we can maybe apply for the grant. But if the county is not willing to apply for the grant, it's not clear to me that we should be saying, well, we're going to bypass the county and apply for it ourselves. That's why I think these conversations are very important to be had collectively and in a collaborative manner. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Perales. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I was going to mention the same thing Councilmember Cohen just did in regards to uh, the grant application due by May 31st, as was stated in the early consideration form. Um, there, there doesn't seem to be an opportunity to get that joint application in by this May 31st deadline regardless. And so it's not like we're holding anything up by having a joint conversation. Um, and I would I would say uh, the reality is, is that 
if we wanted something to be less public or less political, uh, I think Mayor, that that's our that that ship has sailed, uh, and it's not going to be my recommendation of coming to a committee that is going to make that the case, as is clear by the uh, public uh, op-eds, by the uh, letter we got from public defender, um, that this is already political um, in in nature as the memo was developed, and I think is the 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 the, the ensuing uh, words of exchanged uh, are are coming out. Um, so unfortunately, that's just the case, and that's the nature of the business we're in. So I don't think there's any avoiding that, um, and certainly I don't think that we're creating that by having it come to uh, the, the Public Safety Committee and having a joint conversation around it. In fact, I actually think that is a more productive way uh, rather than, than the way that uh, so far it has rolled out and now kind of played out with some back and forth um, letters and, and media about it and then even the conversation that we're having today. So, I, and I, I recognize it looks like we have the votes to be able to do that. And uh, so I'll rest my case and, and hope we can vote and then move on. Okay, Mayor? I just want to understand a little better. There may be some misunderstanding. I'm reading the most recent council prioritization. Um, and I, I don't know if it actually specifically mentions, I know it's been revised and specifically mentions that our office would be taking on the application so that we could actually get the funding since we're not getting any home key allocation so far and that we might actually really want this uh, BHCIP money so we could actually build or convert the housing we need for those unhoused residents who have drug treatment needs. Um, Cousin Mayor Prowl suggested somehow or another it's not going to happen um, I'm looking at it now to try to understand. Well, that came from the early consideration form. Uh, so I guess, Lee, can you uh, provide us with some clarity on that? Sure. The early consideration form for 3A, green lights under the conditions outlined below with the mayor's office submitting the application. So from a staff perspective, for housing and IGR to jump in, um, and lead this effort. We didn't think we had the ability to do that, but the mayor's office, and as the mayor has mentioned, um, he's been having conversations with the state. I have been on a few conversations you know, with the mayor and the county exec. It's my understanding that while the county is applying for similar grants, it's in other areas of this cycle, and so they're non-competitive. So the mayor offered that their office would lead a submittal. Um, with pretty low bandwidth from the housing department and IGR office if needed. So we greenlit it under those conditions with the mayor's office applying for that grant. So that would have to be incorporated in the motion for the mayor to be able to proceed with applying for the grant, is that? My understanding is no, right? Can't the mayor apply for that grant without, without our approval? need to be able to do it on behalf of the city. Yeah, so, um, you know, I would defer to Nora, you know, within the charter, the mayor is the, you know, our political leader of the city and, and has a pretty robust and important role in our intergovernmental relations efforts. Um, I think what I heard the mayor say at the beginning um, for, you know, looking at 3A and, and trying to get some support from the organization or council. So as he submits that application, it doesn't look like you know, just one part of the city, but that is the city of a whole. But I, I would defer to Nora on the legal part of that. Hey, hey Nora, before you provide uh, legal guidance, I just want to uh, ask Councilmember Perales, can can you amend the motion to give the mayor authorization to pursue the grant? And, and for the simple reason that you, I, I understand what uh, you and Councilmember Cohen said about, you know, the county not necessarily being on board, but, uh, you know, I hate to leave money on the table. And if we can pursue the grant and get the grant and then figure it out with the county, I think that would be a more um, effective way to go than not, not go after that. And, and we need county authority to be able to apply, apply for the grant. And city staff and county staff have talked, and the county has indicated through the county executive that they will authorize the application. So, so that, that was my not the case that they're against it. That that's my that's my main question about it. Is it sounds like it's a grant for funding for money that we wouldn't traditionally use. So it sounds like, you know, right? No, it's money. It's for, for construction of facilities. That means for housing specifically, right? 
right? So we can either use it for a quick build apartment community, we can use it for a conversion of a motel. And right now we're striking out in a big way on home key projects. So this could be funding we could use that would essentially be on an existing home key site, for example. Uh, that we Let me, need Mayor, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to ask staff, because look, I'm not trying to claim that you, you don't know what you're talking about, but I'd like to see if we have staff, whether it's Lee, yourself, or there's somebody here from, from housing that as I know housing responded in the early consideration form, I haven't done the homework on this grant, so I'll, I'll take the mayor's word for it. But my understanding is, uh, is that it, the reason we need the partner of the county here, or at least their authorization in this regard, is because this would require that partnership and a, and a lot of that resource is gonna need the county there with us. Um, so tell me if I'm wrong, I mean, it doesn't sound like we are leaving money on the table for something that we would traditionally be using, but am I wrong on that? And what the mayor is saying there is, is there some truth to, is this funding that we could just specifically use? We don't need the county. Uh, we could put this into backfill because I would agree with the mayor, right? We've struck out on home key. And so is this money that we can use to backfill stuff like that? So my understanding, and this is, uh, the mayor is absolutely correct. This is a new pot of money that, you know, cities have not traditionally gone after. Um, but all indications from the administration and the governor's office is that cities should apply for this um, and work with counties. So the mayor is correct. We do have a, a green light from the county that they would authorize an application. And I don't think it's, um, we would be losing out on money that we would normally get or that someone else would get. That money will go elsewhere within the state. And so, you know, I do appreciate there's a lot of logistics to work out and a policy conversation to be had at some point. I don't think um, pulling off a joint county and PISPIS meeting before the 35th or 31st would be doable. Um, so I do think some type of authorization for the mayor to proceed with this at least allows us to then have a policy consideration and say, um, great, we got the grant money, let's proceed, here's what it's for. Or if, if we don't think it's appropriate at that point, give it back. I don't think that'll be the case, but. Uh, the opportunity cost is that that money will go elsewhere within the region or elsewhere in the state. Great. That's helpful. And thank you, Mayor, as well. Yeah, I, I'm willing to make that amendment then. Great. Is that okay with the seconder? Uh, yes. Council? And so that I, that particular item would come back to council then to approve that, um, to approve that specific authorization. Is that the idea of the, of the motion? No, yeah. we won't have time. Uh, I, I don't, no. I think when we traditionally green light something and rules committee approves it, especially with a, like an IGR item, that's the authorization that okay. the administration- fine. We're authorizing then going out that do. grant as part of this motion. I'm fine with seconding that. And that, that clarification is fine with me too. Thanks. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, Mary, you still have your hand up. Did you have anything else you wanted to Yeah, add? just with regard to the, uh, the city related items under paragraph four, um, uh, Completely understand and appreciate if uh, if one of the options for use of grant funding for air tags, for example, isn't ideal. Um, the reason why there's an or in that paragraph is these are mere suggestions. Um, the idea of applying for grant funding to address uh, needs to counter burglary and theft in our our business communities and our small businesses. Um, the idea of providing functionality in that online portal. Uh, for uploading of evidence, um, the idea of halting online fencing by supporting legislation. Those are all things that can easily come back to council. They don't need a lot of dialogue with any other agencies. I would just ask if the uh, committee would consider allowing those things to move forward. So that way, uh, for example, the legislation I know ultimately would need to come back to council for a final vote. And grant, oh. grant funding uh again for for applying for for resources yes that's one of the elements that's because one that, of the elements that element my understanding is we don't need to give authorization for that the police department applies for grants all the time without coming to the council on on a request of of or permission so if 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 there's an application to be put in for some resources that they think they can utilize that's where i think some of the, where it gets utilized you know, it sounds like you have some suggestions here, but I don't, you know, I think that obviously we, we, we hear best from SJPD, but I don't think we need to give that that authorization for them to seek some of that funding. Yeah, difference between authorization and direction here, I guess. And Chief Joseph, if we applied at this point for any of those funds, uh, for the anti-theft funds that were announced by Attorney General Bonnet, Governor, Governor Newsom. 
Have we applied for the grant? Is that your question, Mayor? Yeah. Steve, can you answer that, Lieutenant Donahue? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't actually know, but I can uh, find out real quick and get back to you. Okay. When, when we had begun this effort, our understanding was that there was no such application. Uh, there are areas where we can clearly use resources, such as, for example, to improve the, the functionality of the San Jose PD portal um, for the collection of evidence um, from those in the community who want to offer it. So those are the kinds of things that it'd be good to have grant funding for. Uh, and to have some direction to do that would be helpful because we know there are a lot of priorities to the police department. Yeah, I think for me, it boiled down to more, there was very specific direction, even as you mentioned, you put an or in there, but the reality is if it's just asking our police department, I know several officers that write the grants that you know are, are receiving funds for different things that we've done, things like the, the pilot on the MCAT team. Um, and so, and again, they've never had to come to to us uh, or, or my committee or the council right to get permission to do that. Um, they simply are proactive about it. If it happens to be that there is a grant here that we're not applying for, for one reason or another, similar to what the vice mayor just said, yeah, I don't wanna leave money at the table either. I don't know if it's because we don't have the bodies, right? We don't have the, the people to actually look into this or apply for these grants. Um, but I am happy to just like on the, the other amendment that um, right, we don't leave money at the table. And if there's some grant funding that we can get there, it would be, um, again, up to the police department, apply for the grant. And then rather than go for the direction that we've, we've heard on, on options of where to spend it, that we're looking for the police department to tell us, hey, where best do we think this fits? Where are some of the holes? And how can they utilize that resource? And so, um, you know, I'm happy to include that direction encouragement to Lieutenant Donahue, as he's stating, he doesn't know the answer yet on have we applied for that. Um, that we don't leave money at the table like this, unless, Lieutenant, you come back and say, look, we, we just didn't have the capacity, right? We weren't aware or we didn't have the people to put in the time to, to apply for these grants. Um, would have been nice to, I think, have that answered today, but I'm happy to include that similar to um, the, the First Amendment. Yeah, I guess the request, Councilman Perales, respectfully, was for the, the various items under paragraph four, that was clearly one of them, but that maybe one of them that actually helps fund some of these other things. The others, for example, the, the legislation uh, specifically asked by state legislators for the city to take a position on that bill. It would be very helpful to us to do so. Um, the uploading video evidence is also something that's suggested by several members of the district attorney's office. So just to ask if there's something that we could do by ourselves and we ought to do it. And that's all those items under paragraph four. Yeah, and look, I think this speaks to the nature of the fact that, th th again, as I started my comments, there was so much meat in this that I honestly don't feel this is the right place to have the conversation. Um, it would have been nice, say, for instance, on the halt online fencing, just like we put through other legislative priorities, we've had plenty of opportunities to bring that up as a separate item um, and versus vet out the entire memo and each individual item today on rules. That was my, my recommendation was let's actually, there is a lot of meat, let's have this conversation more thoroughly and then determine if there's something to move forward. Sounds like timing wise, right? There's some things that, that could move forward. I would say separately, if you think that there's an item that should have been on its own, then maybe resubmit it on its own, um, right? And, and, and come back with whether it's alleged priority or uh, the uploading video evidence at the moment, I, I'm fine with the, the amendment that I've made. The remainder of it, I'd like to come to our public safety committee um, and, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, so you're, you're modifying your motion to have the other items and under section four come back to PISFIS? Is that? It was the, the remainder of the memo. It was the, you know, I mean, as, as the original motion was it, was, it was really directing everything to come to PISFIS besides the amendment that I made on, on the grant application. Um, and I'm, I'm fine, again, augmenting if there is another grant that, you know, that PD can apply for. But again, I, I don't, we don't need to give them that, that authority here. Um, so. I would, I'm fine giving that direction and encouragement in our motion today, but uh, the specificities of item four there, I, I don't I don't think we need to take any of them out separately. I think we still refer those to PISPIS. Okay. Just to clarify in the motion, the motion I thought also had some statement about things that can come back through the budget process, you know, or can come back through the budget process. Yeah, I don't, I think I, I, I was more would do that, right? Some I was, I was mentioning that in my motion, but I think it's, it's pointless, right? The reality is, is that those items are already coming forward to the budget process, regardless of what we, we say today, because we've already given that prior approval on, you know, on that to, to, to come to the budget. So I, I don't think it needs to be part of the motion. 
Lieutenant Donahue, you're going to provide some clarity in all this. So thank uh, you. I, actually, sir, I was hoping for clarity. <laughs> I just had a quick question. <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, could you tell me which grant specifically you're um, you're talking about? I know we've done a lot of grant mo motions and or grant applications the last few weeks. Yeah, what I wrote the memo make was, sure we're talking about them. was there is a grant funding opportunity that was announced in November of 2021 uh, by Attorney General Bonin and, and the governor. I, I couldn't tell you the precise name of the grant, uh, but I'd be happy to look that up. Okay, it's in your memo though? Yeah, I, I, I referred to it by the month. I, I don't I didn't I don't think it referred to the specific uh, program. Okay, I'll see what I can find. Okay, and uh, Councilmember Cohen. Yeah, I, I didn't really want to prolong this longer, but I, I'm looking at the memo now, and I, I was trying to find where it referred to these grants, and I don't see it, and that's why I'm confused about. Again, sure. the, the memo was so broad with so many things that if there were specific grants or things that we wanted to talk about, I think those should have been enumerated as specific action items. But the only mention in the entire set of actions about grants says return through the budget process to discuss how to allocate state grants for businesses seeking to install surveillance cameras. There's nothing in the memo that says we should apply for grants. Um, so it's under 4D. Secure funding for local anti. Okay, okay, it's not this. The word grant isn't in that. No, I'm sorry, the magic word grant isn't in there, but yeah, it's okay. So, so. Um, Again, it's it, you know it's there was so much in here that that seemed like it could go through, um, you know the process of that that already exists. That that's why it just seemed it was very confusing to be able to pick out the items that that needed to be addressed now. And they, and again, I think I, I just want to second the statement from Councilmember Perales about you know bringing back a focused memo that says here's some specific things we need to do between now and the end of the fiscal year. And then allowing the council to discuss those specific items, which I think would make more sense because it was really hard for me to even read this memo and parse out which of these items were things that we as a city should be focused on and which ones were things that were more aspirational. So I, I, maybe that's part of why this became a little discussion a little bit, but I just wanted to ask about that. But I thank you for clarifying where that is in the memo. All right. I think that was the last comment. Uh, Unless someone wants to beat this dead horse anymore. So we will go to Tony for a roll call vote, please. Arenas? Yes. Cohen? Yes. Davis? Yes. Carlos? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are now on to open forum. I have Blair Beekman. Hi, thank you. Interesting conversation. Thanks a lot. Um, I think it uh, is always important to consider uh, open public policies and accountability with technology, the civil rights and civil protections can be of help <laughs> a lot in your decision making. Um, I wanted to comment on uh, I think uh, yesterday's meeting that uh, it was, you know, there was an item from the city attorney about the closed session report working with uh, community energy items in pg and &E in our future, fairly long. And the week before the city manager gave a fairly long report on the future of uh, uh, green energy ideas, I think. And uh, so I, for the past two weeks during the city attorney's report, closed session report and city manager report, they're very long detailed reports. There's no space for public comment at that time, which I find odd. And I've been saying, you know, for the past few months now, you know, we can really have a way to have public comment at, uh, you know, a one minute public comment at, at closed session report and public and city uh, managers report if they are speaking on that day as a way to, uh, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's practicing good public meeting practices. Right now, you're, you're saying no, you want a more efficient public meeting process that is dissing and disrespecting how the public should have a voice at that time. I think we really have to work on this issue. I've been doing letters on this subject for months now, and I hope we can continue this conversation in our future. 
I want to continue the conversation, you know, for all the good ideas of reimagine and worker rights issues, uh, tenants' rights issues. Uh, I want to mention uh, Medicare for all more often. I'm sorry I don't. I will try to do that. And good luck how we can really consider Paul Soto case that I think we all have to really work on and address in our future. Thank you. All in user one. Yeah, are we in open forum yet? Yes. Excellent. This is my favorite time of the day. I, I like when you guys say yes to open forum because well, then I don't get, my ideas don't get squelched. You know, you guys don't kick me off. You don't, you know, all of a sudden find some reason to stop, you know, for me to stop talking. I, I know, I know I must be dangerous to the city hall down there, but I just, like I say, you need more overnight patrols for the crime. You know how many cars are stolen in this, in San Jose? Many, but meanwhile, I don't know. The city council likes to focus on facilitating abortions across state lines for pregnant minors. I mean, some of the pimper a madam would do. That's what you focus on. That's disgusting. Really, it is. I, you know, since, since I got the Planned Parenthood lecture from everybody on city council, they made sure to voice their concerns about that. I think that right there is a reason why we have so much crime because you focus on what's going on thousands and thousands of miles away. Meanwhile, cars are getting stolen, like my car got stolen. So what you need to do is focus on midnight to six shifts, not traffic enforcement and speed cameras and gun control and you know, I mean all these Hitleristic things. I mean, think about what you guys do. It's it's like a it's like a uh, it's like a Nazi meeting down there with you guys. Gun control, cameras everywhere, you know, code enforcement everywhere. You guys should be ashamed of yourself, every single one of you. You should hang your head in shame for what you do to this city and what you did to Paul Soto. I can't believe what you I mean, come on, man. You guys you guys are going out to the bottom of the barrel. Back to the vice mayor. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Take care, everyone. Bye.